One of the greatest pioneers of photoelectrochemistry was the German electrochemist Heinz Gerischer. Heinz proposed that photoelectrochemistry and not nuclear fusion or fission was truly the answer to man's energy needs. Now, photoelectrochemistry has been intensively studied for decades now, and this began in the early 70s and the 80s because of the peak oil crisis. When it was perceived the world would run out of oil, scientists, mathematicians, and engineers all hoped that this would be our solution. Now, because fossil fuels are non-renewable, it is necessary to develop processes to obtain renewable resources and use clean energy. Artificial photosynthesis, photoelectrochemical water splitting, and regenerative solar cells are of special interest in this context. The photovoltaic effect was discovered by Alexander Edmund Becquerel, and it led them to the development of semiconductors. Photoelectrochemistry can actually produce clean, limitless energy. So what am I talking about? What does this mean? Well, researchers are making huge progress in the process of producing clean, limitless energy through photoelectrochemistry. In the past, this wasn't really possible. But all of a sudden, with artificial intelligence, things are drastically changing for the better. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Photoelectrochemistry is a discipline of science that uses the principles of both photochemistry and electrochemistry to research the interactions between light and materials. Now, you might be thinking solar energy. Well, this process is essential to many branches of science and technology, says Interesting Engineering, including the creation of renewable energy. The conversion of solar energy into electrical or chemical energy is one of the most important uses of photoelectrochemistry, but there are other uses as well. When exposed to sunshine, photoelectrical chemical cells can produce electricity. In these cells, the photoelectrode absorbs photons to produce electron hole pairs that can be split apart to produce an electric current. In the past, photoelectrochemical materials have been notoriously unstable, making their usefulness in electricity production minimal. Now, a research team from the University of Hamburg and from the University of Munich have found a solution to this problem through research and investigation. The conditions enabling photoelectrochemical processes to occur are rather harsh, explained Dr. Francesco Cadillo from the University of Hamburg. The use of solar radiation, the application of external voltage, and the presence of chemical ions in the electrolyte determine a quick degradation of most photoelectrochemically active materials over time. This was the big bottleneck. While many of these degradation phenomena are still largely unknown, revealing them constitutes an essential step toward developing more stable and efficient photoelectrochemical materials. Now, a lot of people think that the panacea for the world's energy problems is nuclear fusion, but other researchers disagree. The team treated the photoelectrochemistry process as if it were a crime scene and made use of a variety of techniques such as spectroscopy and X-ray scattering to study the atomic arrangement of these advanced materials. They settled on the X-ray radiation source of Petra 3 at DESY because of its unique ability to collect scattering patterns with high time resolution. So what does that mean? Well, when X-rays interact with the material surface, all the radiation is scattered at different angles, creating characteristic patterns. At low angles, the scattering patterns contain information about the outer shape of the photoelectrochemical film, while at higher angles, it reveals its atomic arrangement. To collect both information simultaneously, we used two different detectors, which provided an exceptionally comprehensive representation of the material structure during photoelectrochemical operation. And what this means is that the team is starting to figure out the biggest problem with this clean, limitless energy and why it hasn't worked in the past. With their new understanding acquired from their examinations, 
they are hoping to increase the stability of photoelectrochemical processes and make them a source of clean, renewable, and perhaps limitless energy. But that's not all. The processes can have a variety of other applications. Environmental uses of photoelectrochemistry include the elimination of impurities and toxins from water and the air. Organic contaminants can be broken down into less hazardous chemicals by photocatalytic processes driven by photoelectrochemistry. Finally, the creation of new substances and catalysts with improved light absorbing and change separation capabilities depends heavily on photoelectrochemistry. The goal of this type of research is to create materials that are effective at absorbing a variety of light wavelengths. And obviously, solar researchers have been able to do the same thing. So this technology applies to the goal, which is to continually increase the efficiency of solar panels. And in some ways, this has influenced research in other fields. QB204 has recently emerged as a promising photocathode for photoelectrochemical water splitting. However, its fast degradation under operation currently poses a limit to its application. Now, the purpose of this study was to discover a new way of using a semiconductor electrolyte interface during PEC operation by surface sensitive high energy X-ray scattering. The team found that a fast decrease in the generated photocurrents correlates directly with the formation of a metallic BI phase. And this shows that the slower formation of metallic qubits, as well as the dissolution of the electrode in contact with the electrolyte, affects this process, showing that a comprehensive picture of the degradation mechanisms affecting the electrode under operation can give us a new way of understanding why exactly this didn't really work in the past. Now that we have quantum computing, it's really only a matter of time before we have a new way of actually getting energy, clean, limitless energy. Now, this may be one of them. One of the key areas of study under photoelectrochemistry are actually semiconductors. And many people believe that semiconductors could potentially be the real I mean, a better version of a solid state battery. Semiconductors can discharge their energy incredibly quickly and be charged incredibly quickly, much quicker than solid state batteries theoretically ever could be. But no one's yet worked out how to store enough energy in a semiconductor. But this new research is enabling scientists and engineers to work out how to solve that puzzle. It seems to me that it's only a matter of time before the solution is found to the semiconductor problem. And this potentially could be one of the answers to the world's energy needs. Now, let me know what your thoughts are on semiconductors and whether or not you think photoelectrochemistry could in fact help to solve this conundrum. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.